Hello and welcome to my office. My name is Danelle Hogan and I'm director of this amazing project here at the Pima County School Superintendent's Office in Tucson, Arizona. And today we're going to be doing some experiments related to Bernoulli's principle. But before we get to that, I'd like to show you my favorite physics trick. And I'm actually wearing it as a necklace. This is called the ring and chain trick. And what's really cool is I can take this ring off of my necklace and put it back on while it's around my neck. And while that's pretty cool, that's not the trick I want to show you. So using this ring and chain, I can actually hold the chain apart, bring the ring up from the bottom, and when I drop the ring, what do you think is going to happen? Physics! It gets caught on the chain, which is pretty cool. And it looks a lot like magic, but it's really physics. Because in my world, there's no such thing as magic, only physics. And that does not make the world less awesome, just more interesting. So we're going to be doing some other interesting experiments today that utilize Bernoulli's principle. It's called Bernoulli's principle because it's named after Daniel Bernoulli, the physicist who first um, described this principle and how uh, this bit of physics actually works. Today, to do the experiments that we're going to do during this video, you'll need a piece of paper, a pair of scissors, a couple of coffee mugs, an aluminum can, and a spoon. Make sure that you have those materials ready, and if you need to gather them, you can hit pause here and gather your materials. The first experiment that we're going to do involves the piece of paper and we'll need our scissors to cut a strip of this piece of paper. So cut along the long edge of the paper, a strip that's about an inch wide. And it just needs to be an inch-ish. You don't need to have a ruler to measure it out. So cut a strip of paper that is about an inch wide. Once you've done that, then you need to take the strip of paper and bend over the top part about an inch so that you have a little handle that you can hang on to like that. So I've just bent over about an inch of the paper, then I have a handle that I can hang on to. Pause here while you get your strip of paper ready to go. All right, now that you have your strip of paper ready to go, we're gonna hold this strip of paper with using that handle right against our bottom lip. And then you're going to blow straight out like this, and the two most important questions in science are what do you notice and what do you wonder? So what I want you to do is hold that strip of paper here just like this and then I want you to blow out like this and observe what happens and think about what you notice and think about what you wonder. I wonder why, I wonder if, I wonder how. So pause the video here and do this experiment a few times. Maybe change some of the variables. So try a different strip of paper and see how it works. Uh, and then come back and we'll talk about what you may have noticed and what you might be wondering. Welcome back from your first experiment. What did you notice and what do you wonder? Did you hold the strip of paper against your bottom lip? And when you blow out, did it come up into the airstream that's coming out of your mouth? Did it work really well? What did you have to do to get it to work better? Hopefully you saw that it came up into that airstream and here's the physics explanation for what's going on. Bernoulli's principle actually tells us that when we have a fast moving fluid, either a liquid or a gas, it will have lower pressure than a liquid or gas that's not moving. So when you're blowing air out of your lips, what you're seeing is a lower pressure area in that stream of air with higher pressure air all around it. So imagine this column of air that's coming out of your mouth. And in that column of air, it's lower pressure and all around it is higher pressure air. So when you blow out of your mouth, you have this column of low pressure air here and the higher pressure air that's below it where it's not moving will pull it up into that airstream. And it flaps around because it's fighting against gravity. It's trying to pull it down and it's staying up in that, that stream of air. But that's Bernoulli's principle in a nutshell. Faster moving air has lower pressure than air that's not moving. Turns out this also works with liquids and we're gonna experiment with that next. 
Fantastic work on that first experiment. Now let's try experiment number two. For this experiment, you'll need a spoon and a faucet. When you're ready to do this experiment, you're gonna take the spoon, turn on your water faucet, and dangle the spoon from your fingers like this, and put it into the stream of water, and then pull it out, and put it into the stream of water, and pull it out gently, and see what you notice and what you wonder. Pause the video here while you go and do this experiment, and change things as you're doing the experiment. So turn that water on more or less, and see how that impacts what you're noticing uh, about how the experiment works. Welcome back from experiment number two. What did you notice and what do you wonder? Did you notice that when you took your spoon and put it near the stream of water, that it kind of got sucked into that stream of water? The third graders at Innovation Academy said it felt like there was suction and it pulled it into the stream of water. And then when you tried to pull it back out, it got kind of stuck in there and then you had to pull it out. And when you pushed it back in, it got sucked in again and then it would pull back out, but it tried to stay in that stream of water. Turns out this is also Bernoulli's principle. So Bernoulli's principle works with fluids, which are either liquids or gases. In this case, this fast flowing water, which is a liquid, has lower pressure than the air around it that's not moving. So because you have that faster moving water here, when you get the spoon in that stream of water, it will hold it inside of there because the higher pressure air all around that stream of water is pushing it to stay inside of the low pressure area. And then when you go to pull it out, it wants to hang on in there because of that force that that higher pressure air is putting on it. And you have to pull on it and it, it even angles the spoon a little bit until finally it lets go and it comes back out into the air. What are some of the variables that you changed around? Did you change the speed of the water and how did that impact the way that this experiment worked? It's interesting to change the variables and think about how that impacts the experiment. And you might try some other things later. Some of the ideas that our students from Innovation Academy had was maybe they could turn the water on higher or lower and see how that impacted the experiment. And one of them wanted to try the experiment with a hose, which I thought would be an interesting experiment for sure. What else did you notice and wonder? Our students at Innovation Academy also noticed some cool optics related to how a spoon works. So one of the students noticed that if I look at myself in the concave part of the spoon, then I'll see myself upside down. But if I flip the spoon around and look at my image in the convex side of the spoon, then I'll see myself right side up. That's really cool. It has to do with light and optics, and we're not gonna have time to explain that right now, but it's really cool to notice and wonder how that works and maybe try to figure it out later. Our third experiment today is going to involve the two coffee mugs that you have and also your aluminum can. Let me just tip this down so you can see a little bit better. So I need to put the coffee mugs a little distance apart and then I'm going to take my aluminum can and I'm going to put it in the coffee mug that's closest to me. And the challenge is can you get this coffee mug to jump to the other coffee mug without touching it? And it turns out of course that I can do this otherwise why would I be asking? And so <clears throat> here's how you do it and then I'll explain how it's related to Bernoulli's principle. I'm going to blow down into the coffee mug between the can and the coffee mug closest to me and watch what happens. <sighs> I almost got it in. Let's try this one. Oh, so close. Before we go any further, that reminds me of a really great quote from one of my favorite books. If you haven't read Rosie Revere Engineer, look it up. They read it from the International Space Station. You can find it on Storytime from Space. But one of my favorite quotes from this book is from this page where Rosie's just felt like she's made a big mistake and her Aunt Rose says, your brilliant first flop was a raging success. Come on, let's get busy and on to the next. And then it says, life might have its failures, but this was not it. The only true failure can come if you quit. So I want you to pause and try this experiment a few times and see if you can get the can to jump from this mug to the other mug and go inside of it. Again, my brilliant first flop is a raging success. 
pause the video here and try this a few times, 10, 15 times, and then come back and, and let's talk about what you might have noticed and wondered. Have a look. I missed. <laughs> let's see if I can get this on the second try. I've tried a few times today. So this is fun and it also utilizes Bernoulli's principle, but how? How is that Bernoulli's principle? Let me explain. If I have a bag like this, and I could do this with a much larger bag, so I have a gallon size Ziploc bag here, uh, and I'm going to try to blow this up and we can count how many breaths it's going to take for me to blow this up. So I'm going to put my, I have it just open in the middle part, I'm going to put my lips against it and let's count how many times I, it takes. <gasps> So probably four or five breaths to blow up that gallon size bag. But if I take all the air out of this bag again, I can actually blow it up in less than one breath. Here's how I do it. If I hold this part open in the middle and I hold it a little bit further, I don't, not right close to my mouth, but a little bit further away, about six inches away, and I blow into the opening, <gasps> it's more than full in just one breath which is so great. You can even try this with a much larger trash bag and it will work as well. So how is that Bernoulli's principle? When I'm holding this bag open and blowing into it, this fast moving air right here that's coming out of my mouth is actually pulling in air from this higher pressure area and pushing that into the bag as well, but only when I'm further away from the bag. So if I had this really close to my lips, like this, then I'm only getting the air that's just coming out of my lungs. But if I hold it further away, not only am I getting the air that I'm blowing out from my lungs, but I'm also getting air that's being pulled into that low pressure area and pushed into the bag as well. So that's how I can blow up a gallon bag, a 10 gallon bag, with just one breath of air. And that's related to this experiment here as well. Ah, physics! Did you get yours to finally work and what did it take? Welcome back from that third experiment. It's interesting how this actually can jump the can from one coffee mug into the other and I have so many questions related to this. So our students from Innovation Academy were wondering what impacts whether or not it works. Does it matter the size of the can? So I had some different size cans. I do think from my observations that this can is actually a little bit easier to get to jump from these mugs, but would it make a difference if the mugs are bigger around? Would that make it easier or harder? Does it matter which way you turn the can when you put it into the mug? What if I put it with the tab facing that way or sideways, or maybe I start with it upside down? Or does this distance between the coffee mugs have an impact on whether or not it would work? And I wonder, I really wonder how far can you have these apart and jump it and get it to land in the other can. I've seen somebody do it online pretty far apart, so it'd be awesome to see how far you could get one to jump to the other. But guess what it's going to take in order to be able to do this more consistently? Practice, 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 just like anything else. But here's my engineering design challenge for you. Even when I'm doing this experiment, it gets really annoying. I get so frustrated because I have to hear this all the time and it's jumping around and I would imagine that that would probably drive your parents a little bit crazy after a while and given the fact that we're all hanging out a lot these days it'd be nice not to drive everybody in your house crazy so my engineering design challenge for all of you is I would really be able to I would really love to be able to do this experiment without annoying the heck out of people so is there a way that we can modify our cans or make another kind of cylinder or shape that I could put in this mug and jump to the other one that isn't so darn loud and annoying. So that's your engineering design challenge. How can you modify an aluminum can? How can you make something else that's maybe the same shape, maybe a different shape, and still be able to do this demonstration without annoying the heck out of people? So I would love to see what ideas you come up with, and I would love to see that you've tested them and you can show me with evidence 
So using it first with the regular aluminum can and then with your modified version of the object to show me that it isn't as annoying. So I'd love to see what you've done. You can either share your idea drawn out and show me how you've redesigned the can or redesigned the object that you were gonna put in the cup, or you can post a little video. And on stamazing.org, my website, you can find links to both Facebook and Twitter for our project. And you can post those ideas and solutions that you come up with there. I'm super excited to see what you come up with. The third graders at Innovation Academy have just been given this engineering design challenge as well. So we'll see what ideas they come up with. So you might be wondering, how the heck is this related to Bernoulli's principle? Well, let me explain before I let you go. Do you remember this experiment with the bag that we did earlier and how I was able to blow this up in one single breath, even less than a breath? <sighs> totally blown up in less than a breath. But if I hold it really close to my mouth, then I won't be able to blow the bag all the way up. So this is also related to Bernoulli's principle in the same way. You may have noticed if you get very, very close to the mug, it's harder to get the mug to jump out. But if I'm a little bit further away, I can get the, mug to, the can to jump out of the mug pretty easily. Again, when I'm further away, that lower pressure area that's coming out of my mouth, that stream of air is pulling in air from this high pressure area. So that high pressure area gets pushed into the airstream and then also gets moved into the bottom of the cup. That puts a lot of air into the bottom of the cup, which increases the air pressure inside of the mug. And then it pushes this can out and maybe it flips over, maybe it topples this way or that way. But that's how Bernoulli's principle is re related to this demonstration. Can you get it to work? Can you figure out how else uh, to set this up so that it can be more consistent? What advice would you give to somebody that's new to this demonstration? How could you teach somebody to do this demonstration and be successful at it? And I wonder what your hints are for how to make this easier. So what's the best strategy for getting this to work? And the only way that you'll be able to convince me that you have a strategy that's better than mine is for you to practice and collect some data. So as an example, I really think that it's easier to get the can to go into the other mug if the tab is facing towards that second mug. So I could collect some data. I could try it 50 times this way and see how many times I get it. And then I could turn the, mug, the can the other way with the tab facing towards me and try it 50 times that way, keeping data. How many times did I get it to work? And if I start to see that there is a difference in how many times I can get it in, then maybe it really does matter which way the tab is facing. And I say maybe because even if we have one experiment that starts to support that idea, we still wanna collect a bunch more data. I would want you to try the experiment and as well to see if it works. And we could compare our notes to see if we agree that that might actually impact whether or not it works. What's the best distance between the mugs? And I wonder, does that change depending on which size can you're putting in there? Does it matter if this one's taller? And is there a better distance that I should have the mugs apart? There's just so much that you could experiment with, with this very simple demonstration. So I'd love to see some of your tricks for getting this cool demonstration to work. Well, that's the end of our session today. I hope that you'll share the experiments that you're doing and the strategies that you come up with to make this demonstration work on our Facebook or Twitter uh, social media pages. It's so great to have all of you join us and hopefully we'll see you again at, a, at another session. Bye from Stamazing.